Ayan na, ayan na. Kamusta kayo dyan, guys? Happy Monday, Happy New Week. Mga ka-meta, mga ka-chismisan, mga ka-GMRC, mga ka-ano, alam nyo na des. Kazadi, kamusta kayo dyan, mga ka-meta? I hope you had a fresh and respectful... Uh, ah, you had a refreshing weekend. And I don't want to say it all the time. Tagal natin hindi nag-usap. 44 hours yata or something like that. So today, marami tayong pag-usapan guys. Actually, medyo seryoso tayo today. Uh, we're gonna discuss a number of issues including ano po ang kasaysayan. Ano pa yung sinasabi nila na kasaysayan as chismisan or kasaysayan as marites. We'll discuss that a little bit. Pero ikokonek ko yan sa bigger issue with respect to Department of Education. Kasi today, parang nag-handing, parang ito na yung ano eh, handing down, ano yun? Ceremony dun sa DepEd from Briones to DepEd Secretary Sara Duterte. No? So medyo may Sara all moment tayo dyan kanina. Pag-usapan din natin dyan, mga kasama. Kamusta kayo dyan? Dyan, dyan, dyan. And pag-usapan din natin mga historians. Mga historians. And speaking of historians, guys, mamayang gabi, kausap ko. O, join kayo sa amin. Ha? Ila-live namin ulit yan para sa podcast namin, Project Pilipinas. Si Lisandro Claudio, Professor Lisandro Claudio, otherwise also known as Leloy. Kausapin po natin siya ukol dito sa issue ng kasaysayan, what to expect out, out of the Marcos Jr. presidency, what does it mean in the greater scheme of things. So yan, abangan yan. Doon sa mga hindi natutulog, yung mga showman style, 24-7, join us later, medyo closer to midnight. Doon sa mga kaibigan natin from Australia and New Zealand, bahala kayo dyan, medyo late na sa inyo, tulog na kayo. Pero doon naman sa ano, mga kaibigan natin dito na sa mga better place time zones, please feel free to join us. All right? So pag-usapan natin 'yan. So today, let me go to this quite I would say very serious close to heart issue. As I said, marami tayong gustong pag-usapan, yung growth stunting, yung pagbalikan ko rin 'yan. Don't worry guys. I, kasi soon pag-usapan din natin economic policy ng Marcos administration will have more discussion on economics. Don't worry about it. Alam ko marami sa inyo excited dyan. Ako rin excited dyan. Pero today, medyo balik naman tayo sa issue ng history at kasaysayan at edukasyon. Mahalaga talaga itong issue ng edukasyon. At nakita niyo dun, guys, dun sa mga pinost natin kanina, uh, marami tayong sinabi ukol sa issue ng critical thinking, ng education, ng revisionism, denialism. But let's get down, you know, let's get down to it, no? We have to really understand what's going on here. Sorry, may, may, may gusto ko akong ilabas dito eh. Pasawa itong data natin hindi lumalabas. I have to explain to you guys a number of things. Including, ano yung concept ng critical thinking? Ano yung ng critical thinking? Critical thinking doesn't mean criticize lang ng criticize. Medyo, ano rin yan? It's a form of ignorance kung puro ka lang kritisismo na wala naman basyan or hater ka lang. So, critical thinking doesn't mean criticism for the sake of it. Okay? Hindi ibig sabihin yan. So, we'll, we'll, I'm gonna explain to you what is critical thinking. I'm gonna ex- explain also to you guys yung concept ng peer review. So, yung sinasabi natin, ito yung pag-aaral na peer-reviewed. Ano po ibig sabihin yan? Including yung concept ng double-blind peer review. Alright? It's actually a good thing. In the, I know it sounds medyo brutal. But actually, double-blind is the process by which we ensure that hindi palakasan ng basihan or chismisan ng basihan. But actually, the weight of your argument and the evidence that you muster to prosecute your argument in an academic article, yan ang basihan kung magdidesisyon ng isang journal to publish you or not. Alright? I'm gonna discuss to you also yung concept ng double-blind review. Okay? Para malaman nyo, hindi po, ang chis- hindi po chismis at kamaritesan ang scholarly world. I'm talking about real scholarly. I'm not talking about yung mga... Recto University, YouTube University, TikTok University scholarly. No, I'm talking about real scholarly, alright? Ayan na, pag-usapan natin yan. And then later on also, of course, we have to talk about DepEd, reforms sa DepEd. Alam ko, malaking debate ngayon kung yung K-12, dapat gawin K-10 na naman or K-pop na naman. <laughs> Anong BTS, ang gusto nila mangyari dyan? Ayan tayo eh. Pag-usapan din natin, Debet. Of course, itong issue ay malapit sa puso natin. Hindi lang dahil Sarah All, ang ating sekretary ngayon. Ito ay dahil din sa... Well, I'm involved... I, I'm part of the education sector, right? As, as a teacher throughout the past decade or so. So, ito. Ayan, tama, tama. Tama ka, Ruben. Gusto ko sana sabihin mga kafuego. 
Sabi ko may kalimutan, kalimutan ako, hindi sinabi. Kafuego, yan. GMRC, tuloy yung sinabi ko, hindi naman. Tapos na yan, move on na tayo. Sa mga Kafuego, so makinig kayo dito ha, Ay, walang bawal pasaway. So ito, by the way, kanina, just update lang, nagtitrending actually si, ano, uh, former, now officially former uh, DepEd Secretary Briones, no? So nag, uh, ito, si Leonor Briones, so nag-take over na po ang Vice President. Duly elected vice president, the other duly elected vice president, and also our new deputy secretary, Sara Inday Duterte Carpio. So, siya, siya po ang nag-take over ngayon. May ceremony sila kanina. Ayan, maraming nangyari dyan. May kantahan, ganon. So, very happy, happy times. Pero alam natin, pagdating sa deputy, ma- madami pong problema dyan. Layers and layers of problem. Ang pinag-usapan dyan, and at, at, at para sa akin, ha, talagang dapat pagtutunganan ng, pagtutunganan ng pansin. No? Kasi nagawa ko. <laughs> Itong sector na ito, yung sector ng edukasyon, dahil napaka-underappreciated ito, pero napaka-mahalaga ito para sa kinabukasan ng ating bansa. So, dun sa inyo, yung mga nagbasa ng Rizal, no? lalong-lalo na, hindi, uh, kung naalala nyo, hindi lang yung ano, yung ano pero lalo ito no so kung nabasa niyo yan guys oh kasi Kindle yung binasa ko kasi ayoko masira to eh. love na love ko kasi to so what i do is sometimes i keep some copies and then ilocano style i don't even open it but i read the kindle version so i have quotation directly from the kindle edition so ganito no so ang ginagawa ko is i buy a kindle i finish the kindle i take the notes I write about it, something like that. And then, kung may konting pera, iipon ako, bilhin ko na yung hard copy na ngayon. Hindi na katulad dati na lahat hard copy kasi parang masakit na sa mata eh, lalo sa gabi magbasa. Kindle kasi at least may brightness and all, pwede mo adjust So, this is the copy we have. So, kung nabasa nyo, itong mga, lalo-lalo na itong mga magagandang Penguin edition ng mga Rizal books, nako po, malalaman nyo, napaka-central ang issue ng edukasyon para kay Rizal because para sa kanya, this is ultimately the way, no, to get the country out of not only physical colonial slavery but also mental slavery. Diba? Kasi kung hindi matatapos itong mental slavery natin, kahit anong sasabihin natin, independent tayo, hindi tayo independent, regardless of our geopolitical or economic circumstances, if we are men- yung hindi maayos yung mental slavery, we will always be at the mercies of tyrants, whether domestic, international, or the combination of the two. Kaya very, napakamahalaga yung issue na yan. And of course, mahalala nyo dun sa Noli Mitanghere, isa sa projects nila, Ibarra, was to create a school. Diba? So, yung skwela, very central ito. So, education, very central ito. Doon sa uh, blueprint ni Rizal for a true comprehensive national revolution. No? Uh, mamaya, don't worry guys. Magkakaroon tayo ng specialized discussion on Rizal and our heroes in the future. Don't worry about it. Medyo, etong marvels natin. Who needs marvels when we had real-time heroes? And heroes were, who were also very imperfect, just like us. Who had their fears, their frustrations, their who got in life, their heartbreaks. So don't worry, guys. We'll have some proper in-depth discussions about dun sa ating kasaysayan. But in the meantime, in the meantime, balikan natin itong issue na ito. Now, as I said, my, my training is political science, so I'm not a historian by training. But, but because I have to write on politics across different countries and across a long period of time, so longitudinal analysis or long, long jury, uh, long jury, right? So doing history is inevitable for us because history is the laboratory for social science analysis. All right, okay. So kanina, ito nagkaroon ng handing over ceremony. So si Sarah Duterte ng ating bagong DepEd secretary, oh, you know, yun. So ito, 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 picture nila. Very happy, happy sila kanina. May meeting. Oh, naka-green pa si Ma'am Briones, ha? Talagang at siya, nag-expression na kanyang readiness to assist the incoming administration by serving as a consultant. Alright, so kanina nag-deliver siya ng farewell message niya as education secretary in a turnover ceremony at the DepEd. So, may speech si Ma'am Briones. Now, at ito, so latest news also, private education institutions welcome DepEd Chief and VP Sarah Duterte in a turnover ceremony. Yung isa sa pinag-usapan dito is ah uh, pinag-usapan dito is yung return sa face to face. Oh, uh, lalong-lalo diyan, alam ko yung mga single parent lalong-lalo na yung mga medyo bata-bata pa yung mga anak niyo, 
mahirap talaga yung ano yung online teaching. Sa amin mga teachers napakahirap 'yan online kasi hindi namin alam kung naikinig naman si Jander hindi kailan ko patawagin. Tapos meron tayong mga privacy laws. Hindi mo pwede i-force yung estudyante to show themselves or so hindi talaga hindi mo alam. Sometimes you're just shooting in the dark, right? Uh, but you know, so mahirap din 'yan sa amin mga uh, guro at sa amin sa mga uh, sa amin mga guro kailangan din namin mag-prepare parati ng mga materials, parang PowerPoints na pwede i-present online. Kasi hindi namin pwede gawin yung mga ginagawa namin dati. Yung pupunta ka lang sa classroom, medyo lakad-lakad dito, tapos explain-explain, medyo platonic style, tapos mag-chock-chock ka ng konti dyan, medyo to, you just put few words and explain. Hindi na pwede yan. Kasi gawin mo yan, tutulungan ka na estudyante mo. Hindi mo magagawa yan sa Zoom, di ba? So, kailangan engaging, kailangan PowerPoint, kailangan may visuals. Kaya each lecture sa amin, napakahirap yan. But at the same time, guys, alam ko rin napakahirap yan sa inyo. Uh, especially yung mga may mga batang, yung mga may anak na, you know, elementary lang or etc. And napakahirap din dun sa mga guro dun. No? Lalo sa elementary and, and uh, basic education. Kasi para mas heavy pa yung basic education kaysa sa amin, mga uni- yung mga nagtuturo sa universidad. Diba? So, all my love and support for you guys. And hopefully nga, ito yung plano nang uh, parating na admis- uh, I mean bagong DepEd secretary to push for return to face to face let's say in a, in a month or two hopefully August pa lang there'll be perhaps some pilot projects dapat ginawa pa yan last year pa eh, or the other year parating na di-delay parating may problema may pagkakulang so hopefully ito mabalik na natin kasi Philippines is among the last countries on earth no na bumabalik dito sa face to face so very serious in ito and, and and not to mention out of 60,000 schools in the Philippines 12,000 are private schools, no? So, uh, so two-thirds, close to 70%, guys, uh, are, are public schools. And then around uh, 33% or so, they are from private schools. So, yan, pag-usapan din natin yan. Uh, actually, less than 30% actually are from private schools. So, mga 70-plus percent public school, uh, mga 20-plus percent, I, uh, yeah, barely 20% ng private school. But nonetheless, so a lot of coordination issues ang kailangan dyan. Now, Okay, pansin nyo, medyo maraming nangyayari sa, in my mind, a lot is happening, so i-streamline natin yan. By the way, by the way, by the way, nakita nyo ba yung pinost natin kanina, yung, um, yung interview ko with Ma'am uh, Carlos, Clarita Carlos, so our National Security Advisor, Clarita Carlos, na-post ko na guys, nandun sa baba yung interview namin ni Ma'am Carlos, pa, please panoorin nyo yan para magkakaroon ng idea dun sa interaction namin, but don't worry, This is just the short version, 18 minutes lang yan. Yung interview talaga namin, tumagal ng one hour yan. So, maybe, let's see, ba, we'll, we'll update, upload a more uh, extensive version of that interview para makita niya naman talaga yung back and forth. Alright? Okay, so, soon also, ang yung interview ko also with Neda Secretary Balisakan should come out. I'll share also the link to that. So, sa GMA Network po lumalabas yan. Pakicheck yung link online, sinisend ko sa inyo. You can watch it for free. And dyan sa page ko, so you can see some extensive back and forth discussion with some of the secretaries. Ano yung back- background nila, ano ang bag nila, ano gusto nila mangyari sa ating bansa. Baka sila nag-work for Marcus Jr., so on and so forth. And of course, some of my questions to them, some more specific questions and very educational in discussion. Alright, daming kuda. Okay, balik na tayo dito. So, nung Saturday, pagkatapos ng ating meta na napakaganda para sa akin, ha? love na love ko yan kasi... Economics na naman yung discussion, tapos medyo, diba, medyo discussion natin talaga, infrastructure development, fiscal responsibility, etc. Biglang ito, ha, pagbukas ko ng Twitter, ayan tayo eh. Ayan tayo eh. Meron na naman, ano, meron naman bardagulan na nangyari. Kasi, itong isang artistang bata, sinabi niya, chismis lang yung history. Ayan tayo eh. Tuloy, naging news yan sa coconuts. Tapos ako pa yung kinocode dito. Ayan na, na Yahoo News na yung mga Twitter natin. Walang ya. <laughs> Ayoko na. <clears throat> Ayoko na. Shy ako eh, shy eh. Pag kinocode ako, shy ako guys. Di ako sanay eh. Di sanay ako. Na- ako. Pero yung mga tweets ko kasi social media po, alam mo naman, bardagulan ako eh. Hindi naman yan talaga ako eh. Kasi ako, mabay talaga ako. Pero yung... Etong mga tweets ko, medyo bardagulan. Ito yung sinabi ko, ha? ito yung kinote dito, ay, isang Yahoo News yun, pakicheck yan. O, ibang klase, ba't yung mga tweets natin, nagiging news na. Ito, ha? sabi niya, ah, sabi ko, sabi niya, sabi ko, sabi niya, Idarian. Ayan tayo, si Idarian. You know? You know? 
Sabi ni Darian, history, as in narrative based on verifiable facts and peer review is exactly the opposite of what all these Marites folks are talking about. And you can imagine who I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a specific person, by the way. We know what we're talking about. And then, ito pa. Ito yung concern ko, guys. You know what? Sige, pag-usapan din natin. Ano yung postmodernismo? Nako po, ang sakit sa ulo itong postmodernism na yan. Ayan. Kita niya dito sa likod ko, puro mga Foucault yan. Foucault, 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 Foucault. <laughs> Ayan. Daming Foucault yan. Tapos may dekida pa ako dito. Ayan. May dekida tayo dito. Guess when I was reading this? When I was second, third year college. Noon pa lang, nagpo-postmodern na ako. Not naman in terms of believing in postmodernism, but I was reading this very carefully. Now, debatable if Foucault is postmodern himself, specifically, but... Uh, technically speaking, it's post-structuralist, pero medyo may overlap na yan, eh. Especially if you look at his works. And many people actually blame that guy. Hindi to, ah. Nakikita niyo ba? Ito, ito, ito. Ito, this guy. Ito, ito. Nietzsche. Friedrich Nietzsche. Yan daw may kasalanan na nagkaroon tayo ng, yan, postmodernism. Dahil ang kanyang position sa buhay ay nihilismo, which is, uh, ang term niya is re-evaluation of all values. We have to create our own values, essentially from scratch. No, uh, That's the problem. When you create your values from scratch, you can also create your own kalokohan and fantasies from scratch. Diba? If anything goes, then nothing goes. Then wala na, bardagulan na. So balikan natin itong issue na ito. No? Okay, okay, okay. Anong Charles Foucault? Michel Foucault. Yeah, met. Ayan na. Fuko, 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 fuko. Yan, lahat niya fuko yan. And then, and then ito, 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 eche homo naman kay Nietzsche. Yan, oh. Genealogy of morals. Itong basahin niyo. Ay, nako! Hindi niyo ako kilala. Lahat yan, binabasa ko nung college time. Wala, eh. Eh, yeah, may notes ako. Nakita mo yung highlights ko. Walang, basahin ko ngayon highlights ko. Ito po. Bati mga dito, tingnan mo, bati sa mga footnotes, may highlights din tayo talagang. Parang masipag akong bata, in fairness. Ah. Ito, mayroon may quote. Ah. Because truth was not permitted to be a problem at all. Ay, ay, gusto ko yan. Maganda quote yan. Truth was not permitted to be a problem. Ito, ah, sa genealogy of morals ni Frederick Nietzsche. Alright, okay, balikan natin yan. Okay. Oh, bumalik ka muna dyan. Mamaya tayo mag-usap. Ito naman kay Derrida. Siya yung, ito yung mga, mga deconstruction, mga ganyan charva. Mga sinasabi niya. Ayan. Parang we have to deconstruct yung mga meta, meta-narratives, mga truths. Ito nga si Derrida, ibang klase, kinu-question pa niya yung reason eh, logos eh. Na para sa kanya, reason as defined by Western Enlightenment kind of uh, distorts the real truth which is more complicated than logos and written materials and logic and philosophy. At may mas grabe pa dyan na philosopher na wala akong copy dito, si Martin Heidegger. Nako po! Nako po! Kung nag-Heidegger kayo, time and being yata yung book niya dyan ay. Yan. Bas- balay ka, ayan, komplikado maintindihan yan. Pero next time na tayo dyan, pero si Hegel dito kaibigan natin yan si Hegel. Ayan, si Hegel. Ayan. Yan talaga, yan talaga. Yan ang, yan ang kasama ko na sa North Korea ako. May mga notes pa tayo dito. Ayan. Okay, marami na tayong distortions. Balikan natin itong discussion natin. Okay. Now, kinito kasi yung problema ko, guys. If you look at postmodernism, it was a reaction to modernity. Right? Kaya nga postmodernity. Kaya nga postmodernity. The, the basic idea there, I'm going to simplify it for you, is this, is that masyado tayong naging enslaved by the logic of capitalism, of modern society, of efficiency, of productivity, standardization, etc. So if you want, a, you want a great novel that captures what we're trying to say here, basahin yung Hard Times by Charles Dickens. Ayan, meron ako dito. Ayan, Charles Dickens' Hard Times. Which is really a critique of the cold and, you know, cold-heartedness of modern era. It's all about mathematics, rationality. It's all about logic, right? In a way, modernity can kill your soul, right? And at the same time, modernity, of course, is also shaped by 
relations of power, pre-existing relations of power. So in the case of Foucault, for instance, he says that even in the academic world, for instance, you cannot talk about knowledge in neutral terms because knowledge itself is, uh, it ricochets within the four corners of a power relation. So certain universities are more influential than others. Certain individuals within the university are more influential than others. Certain people, especially Europeans, tend to be more dominant in philosophy and theory, etc. So in short, I think since having La Foucault and a lot of these people who later on be either deployed as postmodernists or postmodernists will use their argument to question modernity. Is that modernity presupposes ito, ha, very shortly. Ha, ito. Modernity is a project of arriving at ultimate truth, so capital letter T, via science, technology, and reason, right? That's the idea. Postmodernity says, no, 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 there's no capital T, there are many small letter T's, there are multiple, there's a multiplicity of truth. Because what we define as truth is itself shaped by our historical circumstances and given power relationships in a specific era. Now, gets nyo bayan? Essentially, I... And simplify it to you uh, these six books of Foucault here, all right? Uh, Le Archaeologie du Savoir, yung the Archeo uh, Archaeology of Knowledge by Foucault, also that, for instance, he explains that a lot. Will. So, Dito, for instance, this is the book by Foucault. Here, he discusses, for instance, how structure of power relations also shapes the expression, the processing of science, among others. Now, I don't want to over-explain this because I will end up like almost I'm justifying some of the kababalagan na nangyari sa ating bansa. Alright? Mamaya na yan. Okay, I will not overdo it. Kaya nga, medyo umakit ang ano ko, eyebrows ko pag may nagsasabi ng post-postmodern, post, post postmodern. Huwag gusto ko sabi, binasa mo nyo ba yung mga libro nila? Do you even understand what these guys were trying to say, right? Kasi tayo, medyo nag-effort tayo nung dati. Anyway, now, the, my problem with postmodernism is, I, I have many problems with postmodernism. One problem is that if you do postmodernism, at some point, parang wala ka ng tiwala sa buhay. Like, ano yan, everything is socially constructed. There's multiplicity of truth. Your idea is just as right as mine, regardless of whether it's attached to any kind of objective reality. So it questions the so-called foundationalist paradigm in social sciences, that there's an objective world out there and we're living towards it. So, in a way, it's an extreme kind of what in philosophy calls solipticism. Now, going back again to this, this notion of postmodernism. So, postmodernism says there are multiplicity of truths because the meta-narratives of truth are themselves a distortion of a more complicated reality and a reflection of power relations among others. Now, I believe that postmodernism has some good critics. Crit I mean, it's a good critique of some of the shortcomings and pretensions of modernity project, right? Nonetheless, my problem with postmodernism is that it can be abused and exploited by all sorts of people to say anything goes, right? Anything goes. Diba? Parang, ito, parang, how do I put it? Hindi, mahirap sabihin ito. Next time na lang, baka makadali tayo. But, but you get what I'm saying. I mean, it's like, mahuli kang ano, ng bababae, tapos hinuli ka ng babae, tapos sabihin niya, Oy, you're cheating on me. And sabihin mo, but what is cheating? Cheating is a socially constructed ideas. What is love? is socially constructed. What matters is how we see our love and relationship from different angles and find in the plurality of the truth a common shared future for us. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can play that game, right? That's the problem with postmodernism. You can easily use it to question any objective truth. And some truths are, have more objective basis than the other, right? For instance, any temperature, you can measure that, right? Uh, if a crime is committed, you can measure that. Postmodern says, but what is crime? Crime is what is defined by the state. But what is state itself but a stationary bandit, which imposes its will on the people and coerces them to pay taxes and obey? You, you get what I'm saying? Like, it makes sense to a certain degree. Sure, like, parang don't take everything for granted. But if you push it a bit too much, then it, it will be like, you can justify anything, right? You can justify anything, right? You can question everything and say, but what is love? What is law? What is order? What is kind? Yeah, I mean, you, it's nice to have a conversation and all. We have to, but if you're just going to question that there's any objective truth at all, medyo delicado ito. Medyo delikado ito. 
Marami tayong mapupuntahan dyan na ayaw niyong mapuntahan. Alright? Yan ang naging problema ko sa postmodernism. But the bigger problem I have, kaya nga ako, I was able to balance that out. Kasi second, third year college pa lang, itong mga binabasa ko. So I was able to balance that out because I focus on geopolitics, on economics, which is reality. Kung ma- hindi maayos ang economics mo, people are gonna die of hunger. As simple as that. It's, you know, you cannot POMO, which is a shortcut for postmodern. You cannot POMO economic policy. You cannot POMO foreign policy. Right? Ganyan to, I'll give an example. I'll give an example. Ganyan to, ha? Parang, sinugot ka ng ibang bansa at sinakop yung territory mo. Tapos bigla mag-ganong ka, mag-pomo ka. But what is territory? But the manifestation of the modern European conception of the state. But what is a state but the legacy of colonial powers? You get what I'm saying? Walang ya. Pinasukan tayo dyan sa West Philippine Sea. Sinasakop tayo. Kinukuha nila lahat ng maista natin, tapos eh, may gila mag-pomo ka. But what is territory? We can share the world. We can share love. You, you get what I'm saying? That's the problem. Yung in-exploit ang postmodernism to justify all sorts of kababalaghan. And this is also my problem, guys, right now. Because I see postmodernism is also being used, right, to justify proto-fascism, authoritarian populism, racism, and all sorts of questionable versions of anarchism, libertarianism, and all of these isms, which essentially are there to say, okay lang na may maling nangyayari because ano pa ba ang mali? Baka mali para sa'yo, pero hindi mali para sa akin. So let's just agree to disagree. So in short, respect my opinion. So the whole idea of respect my opinion is the most potent and destructive manifestation of mal-digested postmodernism. Yung, basta respect na lang my opinion, di ba? Ewan lang yan, huli kitang ganyan, tapos, hindi, respect na lang tayo. Guys, respect na lang tayo. Eh, paano kita respect to? May ginawa kang kalokohan. Eh, ano yan, di ba? Yan ang problema. Yung respect my opinion, guys, yan ang essentially POMO, PI style, alright? Respect my opinion. Which is, anything goes, I'm entitled to my own facts, you're enti- I'm entitled to my opinion, you're entitled to your opinion, your opinion, our opinion, all of them are equally valid. Pahala na lang kung sino mas maraming boto. Parang padamian na lang tayo ng numbers. Numbers game na lang tayo. You get what I'm saying? This is the problem we have. The respect my opinion ideology is essentially manifestation of postmodernism in the Philippines. As simple as that. That's how I see it. Right. Now, may, may batang nang sabi, and you see, I don't want to even uh, name names. Oi, Wax, Flores, alam ko, troll ka, umayos ka. If you cannot understand proper intellectual discussion, umalis ka dito, otherwise, lagot ka sa akin. Oh, bahala ka dyan, ha? Umayos ka. Umayos ka. Alright? So, etong sinasabi ko. Now, of course, I agree. Let me be very clear. Yung respect... See, I said it in, in quotation. Respect my opinion. Because I'm, I'm referring to a specific phenomenon, right? Of course, maganda rin yung respect my opinion in the sense that you have... Alam mo yung allegory, di ba? Like, there are two blind guys. One touches the back of the elephant. One touches the front of elephant. And each of them think that's the universe, right? Now, in a way, they should respect each other's opinion because both of them only see part of reality. So I'm all okay with that kind of respect my opinion. In a sense that no, no, no one is perfect in terms of having uh, perfect information, etc. But yung tipong, yung opinion mo ay base sa kalokohan at kasinungalingan at yung opinion ko ay base sa peer-reviewed studies and verifiable evidence, hindi pwede yan. Hindi pwede yan. Do you get what I'm saying? So now, kaya nga sinasabi ko parate, you're entitled to your opinion but not your own facts. And better make sure your opinions are based on verifiable facts, in the alternative facts, fake news facts. Right? Okay. So this is where I say, yung may, may bata nang sabi na chismis lang daw ang, ang history, or history is just like chismis. Now, I don't want to blame this person, I don't want to name this person or whatsoever, because unfortunately, mukhang ito, she was not exposed to the kind of, let's say, Education that should have perhaps should have inculcated a better appreciation of what history is all about, etc. All right. Now, so I don't want to make this personal because this is what this is not what our metas are all are, 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 are all about. Our metas are about something more than that. Kaya nga meta, di ba? Ayan. Oh, balan na kay Jen sa troll na yan. Umayos siya. 
Walang iya. Balik tayo dito sa Chismis at Marites. Hi. Parang hindi ko yata na-on yung aircon. Parang mainit na na-distract ako. Tuloy saan tayo napunta. Okay. Ito ah. First of all guys, we have to understand itong konsepto ng peer review. Kasi when you talk about history, I'm not talking about just random set of events. Kasi if history is just a random set of events, there's so much to talk about in ad infinitum. We should talk about the motions of the stars. We should talk about the Big Bang and the evolution in the uh, chemistry of the universe. You, know, you get what I'm saying? We can talk about practically anything that happened in your barangay, your away with your kapatid, your away with your joa. So, you know, no, we're not talking about events per se. History, as in history with letter with capital letter H, what we're talking about here are the, the major forces and personalities and factors that have shaped our current circumstances and could shape our future, right? So it's not everything under the sun, or not even the sun sometimes included there, right? Now, and when you talk about the discipline of history, you're talking about analysis and meta-narratives, right? Grand narratives. Parang mahirap na gumawit ng meta. Grand narratives that are based on scholarly studies and verifiable facts. And that is where, guys, ang di-discuss natin dito is yung konsepto ng peer review. Alright? So, ano po ibig sabihin ng peer review? So, this is how it works. So, let's say, eto, hey, Darian, okay? Mayabang ka eh. Feel mo, ang galing mo. Sige, sulat tayo. Gusto ko magsulat tungkol kay tatay. Para sa akin, si tatay ang the best, kunyari, di ba? Mag-submit ako sa journal, okay? Now, sabihin natin ikaw, siguro prof ka in some university, whatever. Okay, ikaw big time dan. Okay lang yan. Now, if you want to submit a journal article to a reputable, you know, set of people, you know, you want to submit for a journal article, dadaan po yan sa peer review. Ano ibig sabihin yan? There will be at least three other experts in whatever field you're writing in who will be asked to review, right? Hindi pa kasama yung fact-checking, editorial, yung mga iayusin yung grammar, iayusin yung prose, ganun. Hindi, hindi pa kasama yan. Just the substantive level, right? You have three other people who should not be related to you at all, totally from a different world, who should not be attached to you. So the selection, there's, there's a selection process kung saan pinipili sino mag-review sa'yo and they have to be leading experts in their fields. Right? So yan ang nangyayari dyan. So when you submit the post and then sabi nyo, Tatay Digong, best president ever, ganun, best in the solar system, pag dumaan yan sa review, anong, anong best in the solar system? Meron bang ganun? Ah, yeah. So, dun sa peer, there'll be three of them. And sometimes, magkakaroon ng tiebreaker. Kaya nga tatlo, di ba? Because what if one says no, one says yes, and another one says, go ahead tayo. And then, even if they say go ahead tayo sa first draft mo, the reviewers will put all sorts of comments there, very detailed. I have a question with your methodology. I have a question with your interpretation of the data. I have a question with your data set. I have a question, for instance, with your main argument. All of those comments come in. And then as a reviewer, you're asked, reject, minor revision, major revisions, or go, go, go. Almost certainly, when the first draft comes, at best, you're going to get minor revisions, right? At best, you're going to get minor revisions. And so you have to take in consideration the proper review. Now, there are different kinds of journal article. Wag kayo magpapadala dun sa iba na, ay, nakapublish yan ng journal article. Ah. There are two kinds of you see, there are two kinds of journal articles. There are indexed journal articles and there are non-indexed. The index ones are ISI and Scopus. Ito yung mga very reputable journal articles no, that are highly regarded and highly cited. To get published there, it's not a joke. It takes multiple revisions and you have to go through many, many processes, right? To get it published there. And once you're published there, you're kind of going to get respect of your colleagues and all. And, the, and then there are the non-indexed journal articles, which have much more relaxed standards and are not as established and, 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 and some would even say as meticulous or sedulous as they should be, right? So don't just fall for people who said, we are published. Check, are they published by indexed publication? ISI Scopus pa yan. And dun sa university, if you're publishing ISI Scopus because it's so hard, you get incentives. You can pay, be paid 75,000 pesos to 100,000 pesos in some universities. I'm not going to say which universities, uh, but this is the major universities. For every ISI Scopus journal articles, for instance. Now, 
if you write a book, the same process. It goes through a peer review. Book proposal mo pa lang, it goes through three reviewers. Tuloy ba yung pro proposal pa lang yan, ha? And then once you write the manuscript, it also goes through a review process. That's why journal articles alone take a year perhaps to be published. And then when it comes to books, it can take two to three years to write and another year to get published. So in short, hindi yan chismis. Now, there are even levels of review. So there are reviews whereby those who are reviewing your work can see your name and affiliation. But there's a process by which we make sure we take out any biases by putting what you call double blind. Double blind means I don't know who's checking me and they don't know that I wrote it. So that's so in the high level journal articles it's a double blind pressure uh, process whereby neither the reviewee or the reviewer know whose work is being discussed. So that is why ang pasok ka dito sa analysis mo sa review mo without any prejudice or bias. Now Obviously, that itself is not perfect. I mean, there are ways to know. For instance, kung sikat kang writer, ay, sikat kang author, medyo gets ng tao how you write. So even if you don't put your name na, ay, alam ko si Benedict Anderson yan, or alam ko si Foucault yan, right? Kasi nabasa mo yung mga books niya. So familiar ka to some of their terminologies, their, their, their prose, their style of writing. But nonetheless, to ensure we have minimal bias because you cannot 100% remove it, we put the double-blind process. So, when we talk about major events in the past, including martial law, right, or the years of dictatorship, etc. All the studies you see, which almost unanimously pointed in one way, which you know what it is, right, they are based on peer reviews. I'm talking about books published by Chicago University Press, perhaps. Books published by top university press. I'm talking about journal article produced by best journal articles out there. I'm talking about historians, political scientists, economists uh, who have highest credentials and, and, and who would be canceled totally and lose their jobs if they come up with mumbo jumbo studies, right? So you're not talking about one or two articles. You're not talking about one or two academic. You're talking about a ton of peer-reviewed, sometimes double-blind peer-reviewed process whereby every single line and word and argument in your academic scholar work goes through the process of scrutiny, right? So, yon. Not to mention, even if, sabi natin, for instance, I write a column, but I belong to a university. If gumagawa ka ng kalokohan mo sa column mo, your colleagues in university are gonna call you out. Your students will call you out. Lalo, lalo kung nagtuturo ka ng grad school. Yung estudyante mo, expert na rin mga yan, eh. So that is why, that is why, you cannot just chismis. Uh, you cannot just chismis. Uh, you can, you can chismis. You cannot dismiss as chismis. Ay, you cannot dismiss as chismis, right? Uh, ton of materials based on high caliber, double blind peer review, journal articles, books, etc. Et That's essentially how scientific consensus is established. Whether in the social sciences or natural sciences, right? Now, remember also, and this is where I really have a lot of respect for historians, one thing that the historians do is this, diba? So, kunyar, if you're an economist, you can do a lot of studies by going to, I don't know, gaining access to the data of government, put the numbers together, make calculations, you can come up with a study. Political scientists, somehow similar, we can do that too, right? But, you see, historians, they have to do archival studies. So, they have to literally go, for instance, to Madrid, find in the archives there, something that was written, let's say, about Rizal or by Rizal. So they have a physical material, right, that has been certified by governments, by experts, by institutions as valid, and that is the basis for them to make historical arguments. So mga historians, ang hirap ng trabaho nila because magkakalkal talaga mga yan. Almost archaeological ang approach nila. And that's why archaeologists are like historians too, right? Talagang magdidig out ka ng evidence and based on that you say, oh, this was the year when the Qing dynasty was established. This is the year when the Roman dynasty, Roman Empire fell, for instance. And then you find this evidence, DNA study, carbon, uh, you, know, you, you know what I'm saying? So there's, there's a lot of scientific ways to verify the archival evidence or archaeological evidence that becomes a basis for historical analysis and studies. So in short, guys, hindi ito parang blog. 
hindi ito parang vlog. Hindi ito parang articles, journal. Ay, hindi lang parang ito column lang sa newspaper, right? No offense. All of them are important in their own ways. But when you talk about scholarly production, when you're talking about double-blind peer review, my goodness, pamatay yung process na yan, guys. Pamatay yan. At kung sabog yung sinulat mo, mapapahiya ka talaga. They will take... Wala, masisira ka talaga. And sometimes, sabihin natin, ito, tamat ka, boy, tamat ka, ayaw mo dumaan dun sa mahirap. Biglang publish ka lang ng kung saan-saan. Hanapin ka ng mga high caliber. Sabi, you will be a laughing stock of the entire scientific community. Whether in the social sciences or natural sciences. In short, in short, bawal ang kababalaghan. Right? Now, nothing is perfect. Of course, there are mistakes. Of course, there's what you call paradigm shift. Uh, where suddenly new evidence comes up that gives new light to available analysis or materials. Okay, that's fine. It happens a lot in archaeology. It happens in physics. For instance, think about Galileo who got a telescope and was able to scientifically prove that it's the motion of stars. Therefore, we're not a geocentric world, etc. So you can do that. But you see, what we're talking about here is a ton of historical evidence, including eyewitnesses, eyewitnesses, including court cases, U.S. around the world that provide incontrovertible evidence that certain things happen in the past, including human rights abuses and all. So to dismiss all of that is to dismiss the suffering and emotions of people who are still living with the trauma of the past dark era, right? Have you noticed, I'm not even naming names because I'm not here to make... You see, kasi guys, hindi, hindi ko gusto na maging marites tayo dito, nagsisira ng iba. No? So I'm not talking about individuals per se. I'm talking about a problematic state of mind based on a lack of proper understanding of what is a scientific what is the scientific process eh, sinasabi ko mahirap mag-publish kaya pag sinasabi ko ako ay double digit h index or ganon hindi na, hindi naman yun na nagsasayabang lang ko eh, because ang hirap po it's so hard to be published especially by high caliber publications university press or by peer-reviewed ISI Scopus Journal. It's so hard, guys. It's so hard, right? So if you got published by them, and not once, not twice, but many times, and then eight of you out of ten are saying the same thing in all of these top-level art, uh, journal articles, you cannot just dismiss that. <laughs> dismiss them as dismiss. I mean, dismiss, dismiss, na bubulol na ako. So that is why what I'm saying is this. Kung may issue ka sa history, show me the evidence. Where are your peer-reviewed studies? Nasaan? Show me. I don't see it. Show me a single. All a single will not be enough. If you want to overturn the whole scientific consensus, you have to go more than that, right? But show me a single high-caliber journal article or university press book publication that tells you marites lang lahat ng mga sinasabi nila about the darkest years in our modern history. Come on. Show me one. Wag magsalita lang na, ay, ano lang yan. Or, we need more studies. What more studies? We have a ton of studies if you bother to read. And if you know better, then go ahead and publish. But I don't see you publishing. Show me the publication. Where is your publication? I'm not talking about blogs and vlogs and columns and articles lang here and there. I'm talking about high caliber, double peer-reviewed works. If you don't have that to show, that means, ikaw ang marites, ikaw ang chismoso. Diba? So, and this brings me to the second level of analysis for today. Critical thinking. So, isang na napansin ko sa, akin, sa atin is that many people fall into two extreme camps. One camp is, wag tayo magulo, makinig lang tayo, sumunod lang tayo, law-abiding citizen, blah, blah, blah. Alright? I have nothing against law-abiding citizen. What I'm saying is, quote and quote. So, in short, ano lang tayo, sunod-sunuran. Okay. Obviously, we have a problem with that because that rejects agency, free will, full citizenship, right? Ano tayo, slaves? Ano tayo, bata? Presidents, leaders shouldn't treat us as kids. We're, we are full-fledged adults who can vote. We put them in power. So we're adult enough to decide who's going to be our next leader and they're accountable to us. So I don't buy yung mga sunod lang tayo, sunod lang tayo dyan, yung utu-utu style na ano, budol-budol. Huwag tayo magpabudol-budol dyan. At the same time, ay na ayoko rin yung mga Tingin lang nila ang maganda gawin ay kontra lang ng kontra. Nega lang ng nega. Ayan ang pinakaayo ko talaga. Minsan mas ayaw ko pa nga yan kaysa yung budol-budol. At least yung budol-budol, may good intention pa nga yung iba eh. Parang 
makinig na tayo para may mangyari. Parang misa, I agree naman. Actually, yeah, ma- who knows, di ba? Pero ang pinaka ko yung nega lang ng nega, wala naman ba siyan? Kahit, kahit may magandang nangyari ng nega. Ito, 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 ito. So, sa Twitter, nakita ko, ito nakakairita yung mga, mga fake woke na yan. Ha. So, may ito, ha. And mga duwag yan, eh. Mga duwag yan. They, didn't, they don't even have the courage to show their identity, to, to write under their own name, I write under my name, and it's a verified account. There's a check mark there. It's me. Okay? I write under my name. I take responsibility for it. Now, nung isang araw, may sinabi lang tayo na in fairness naman kay Mar- Marcos, President Marcos, may ginawang ganito, ganyan, ganyan, na medyo okay naman at inaayos yung problema ng dating administration. Alright? Because I want to give credit where credit is due, di ba? Whether ito yung good appointment sa DFA, whether ito yung uh, well, presidential decorum, whether ito yung uh, postponing some projects which may uh, undermine fiscal sustainability. Tapos ito mga, ito mga fake woke na yan who have, have destroyed the name of progressivism in this country. These fake wokes are one of our big problems. They give a bad name to progress. They give a bad name to the left. They give a bad name to... Ay, nako. Uminit ang ulo sa mga fake woke na yan. Tapos aatake na ako. Ito si Darian. Ano yun naman? Tapos kinot lang yun, ha? And then, e, si Darian, isa lang naman sinabi niya negative all these years na nag-blank. Lala niya may blank akong editorial column dun kay Tatay Digong na independent foreign policy. Walang yan to. I have been getting all sorts of threats right for writing thousands of articles and posting millions of social media uh, hanash di ba <laughs> and then gaganin mo ako walang ya so eto rin pinakaayo ko yung ano naman nega lang ng nega at may konting sasabihin ka na positive about something na ayaw nila ikakancel ka nila but good luck canceling me like i will cancel you buti Swerte itong mga duwag na to, hindi ko sila pinapoint out. If I if I retweeted that person tweet, mad troll to ng gusto. And nagawa ko kasi yan dati, nicely pa. Yung parang, oy, wag naman ganyan. Tapos in siya ng mga supporters ko. Kawawa siya. Ano siya? Nag, ano na? Nag, ano na siya ng account niya? So, hindi ko na ginagawa. Dati kapag uminit ulo ko, ikukote ko yung mga hanash mo dyan. Pagsabihan kita, kawawa ka sa mga trolls ko. <laughs> Ayan tayo so, ngayon, mabait na ako eh. Hindi ko na gagawin yan. Kasi may time nga, nag-joke-joke lang ako doon sa isang vlogger eh. Kasi may sinabi ng isang vlogger na kaibigan natin. Oy, may kilala kong analyst na ganyan-ganyan. May para siyang blind item. Ako naman, sutil, di ba? Uy, baka naman ako yun ah. Ginanon ko siya. Oh my goodness, after a few hours, nag-message siya sa akin. Richard, anong pinampinose mo? Inatak ako ng mga kameta mo. Ganon-ganon daw. So, Ano ba? Sabi ko, joke lang yun. So, I had to go there and clarify. Oy, guys, nag-joke lang ako. So, after that, I realized na medyo, ano na, delikado na. So, pero, ano to, maglagot itong mga batang to eh. Duwag na nga kayo. You don't write under your own name. Then you have, you have the audacity? How dare you question me? I got thousands of threats throughout the years for speaking my mind and conscience, right? I have millions of posts, Right? I have millions of engagement, tens, hundreds of millions of engaged probably on social media. I had thousand articles written on the previous administration. And to say, to judge me based on that, yan, yan na, ayoko yung nega lang ng nega. So, what is critical thinking? Going back to my good friend, Hegel, it is the negation of negation. It is negating both, so it's neither nor, right? It's negating both ututo na nagpapudol-budol and at the same time, nega-nega na hater. Both of them are wrong. Critical thinking means case-to-case basis, you look at the evidence, you make a judgment, then you also look at the big picture and make an assessment about the whole system. Right? Critical thinking is about, so this is what we do in school, and I'm very thankful to UP, my alma mater, right, for, for inculcating that critical thinking in me. And when I've been teaching in other universities, Ateneo, La Salle, whatever, I also try to impart that UP style. Now, I'm not saying they're not doing it. I'm just saying UP has a different style. Including yung mga tamad na prof dyan na critical thinking lang tayo. Bahala na kayo mag-aral. Ayan, ayan. Sir naman! Magturo ka ng konti para naman. Then the critical thinking yan, guys. Mag-aral lang kayo nyo. Hindi, hindi. Ayoko, okay, ayoko. Okay. Wala tayo yung name dito. Uh, mamaya na tayo mag-blind item. Mamaya na. Hindi naman sa UP. Pero may mga tamad na prof mga. Guys, critical thinking tayo. Wala, kaya wala na tayong syllabus, wala na tayong readings. You just have to think for yourself critically. Uh, um, sir, but 
paano tayo mag-graduate na to? Anong 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 petsa na? <laughs> Yan na. Ano, wag naman ganoon, 'di ba? Critical thinking means like this. Going back to the metaphor I always use or analogy. It's like painting. So you go to a to a art school, right? A good art teacher will teach you the techniques of doing sculpture and painting. But he will never tell you how to exactly do this painting or that painting or what exactly to paint. He will teach you the techniques. He'll give you, he'll give you the ro- uh, rules of the road, the lay of the land, but at the end of the day, you come up with your own painting based on the techniques that you learn. It's kind of the same thing also. So what you do, for instance, is you don't come into your student and say, person X is a bad leader or a great leader. You don't do that. You go to the student and say, this is how we collect evidence about history. These are the available evidence that we have about this person. Based on this available evidence, these are the sets of assessments, preliminary assessments we can make about this person. Now, of obviously, always the glass is half full or half empty or one-eighth full, two-eighth, ten. So, depending on. But I will leave it to you to decide whether this is the kind of leader we want or not. Do you get what I'm saying? That's inculcating critical thinking. Or look at what I do in our, our meta. I didn't endorse a single candidate in our metas. Now, I had the opportunity to, to uh, uh, interview some over the others, etc. Of course, I have certain political values. I have certain humanistic tendencies and predilections given in. But at the end of the day, it's up to you guys who you want to vote. What I'll, I can tell you is how to arrive or what I think is the best way of arriving at a judgment about who's your best uh, candidate. And then I'll not only say which candidate is good. I also explain to you which candidate can work best in these circumstances. So for instance, ganito yan. Oh, let me give you another uh, analogy or metaphor. Let's say, bibili ka ng kotse, di ba? So there's like, there's like, I don't know, BMW, Benz, Ferrari, Farmali, ay, sorry, Ferrari, Lamborghini, okay. No, no, no. And then there's like a Subaru there. Now, in a nutshell, Maybe, I don't know, this Lamborghini is the best car or I don't know, the Mustang is the best car. I don't know. But circumstances matter. Let's say you live in Dakota or Ohio and the, I don't know, the snow is so thick. Now, in that circumstance, actually, my advice is to buy the Subaru. Because Subaru, and this is, by the way, true, huh? Subaru has the best tires and systems to deal with yung, yung mga pag freeze na yung mga roads and all of that. So, actually... So, a Subaru may not come over a Lamborghini, let's say, in a nutshell. But under those circumstances, I'm for a Subaru. In politics, it's the same. There could be candidates, actually, who on paper actually look the best. Pero feeling ko, hindi yan mag-work sa Pilipinas. Mag-work yan siguro sa Norway or Sweden. Or mag-work yan siguro sa, I don't know, Saudi. or I don't, Hindi yan mag-work sa Philippines. Diba? Kasi dapat yung leader mo, tugma din dun sa panahon. Pero hindi ko sasabihin sino dapat yan. Ang sasabihin ko lang ganito, yung sitwasyon natin, ito yung mga candidates, pros and cons, bahala na kayo mag-decide. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's critical thinking. To allow people, to empower people to think on their own, to make their assessments on their own, and to learn, you know, the, the tricks of the trade, the lay of the land, the rules of the road, and how to put things together, right? Bahala na kayo mag, ano, to put uh, evidence and all together, but I'll teach you how to do proper critical analysis of a situation. That is the critical thinking, guys. Uh, diba, Alexis, tama, diba? Yung Subaru, the best yan sa mga, yung freezing, ano. So, kung punta ka sa Midwest or Northern US, my suggestion is get a Subaru. I'll never suggest to you Mustang or, or Ferrari. Definitely not Ferrari or Lamborghini. Good luck dyan, diba? So, do you get what I'm saying here, guys? So, critical thinking is empowering the students to think on their own by learning the process of logical reasoning to be able to sift through and distinguish between fake news and marites on one hand and actual peer-reviewed studies and also to be able to look at two sides of the coin, I don't know, four sides of an elephant, you know, and come up with the gen- general assessments about things. And then, respect my opinion, no problem. Because I know your opinion was arrived at not because may napanood ka sa TikTok, or dahil nakikibanwagon ka lang, or nakutan ka lang sa candidate na ito, or nabudol ka lang ng ganyan. Hindi. It's dahil nag-isip ka naman, you put all things together, all things considered, I lean a little bit more on this because of this consideration. And then you lean... You know, actually, the guys who do that best, alam mo yung mga vloggers na kinocompare nila yung mga kotse, they never tell you what car to buy. Eh. Yung mga good ones uh, that I watch, uh, yung mga sa mga kotse, ganun. They never tell you this car is better than this one. They always say, 
kung itong hanap mo, ganito ang budget mo, itong speed ang gusto mo, itong horsepower, itong endurance, insurance, whatever, para sa akin, maybe this. But if you're looking for this, and, and zaddy ka na, hindi ka naman 20s, di na bagay sa'yo ganyan, baka itong gusto mo makuha, di ba? Or kung masyado kang bata, huwag ka mag-BMW, mukha kang DOM, di ba? Yung mga ganyan, guess no? So, that's how you... So, in a way, some of these vloggers teach you to do critical thinking when it comes to cars. Which cars are the best, right? So, ganun din yan, guys. Eh? Ganun din yan. So, I can use a lot of other analogies in boxing, in sports, etc. That's critical thinking. You don't come to me so that I'll tell you what to think about something. You come to me because through our conversation, or my monologue in this case, hindi naman, nakikinig naman nag-interact naman ako sa inyo. Through our virtual conversation, we uh, have a preliminary idea of how to make a proper assessment about things and then eventually what decisions we should make down the road. Yan ang critical thinking. In a way, it also goes back to the idea of don't just give people parang the fish, but teach them how to, you know, get the fish in the lake. Parang ganon. That's essentially critical thinking. You don't just, uh, you don't mouth, you don't just spoon feed. Sorry, you don't spoon feed to people information and decisions. You empower them to make the right decisions through the right process. You teach them the method of proper logical thinking and how to assess and put different materials together. Now, so, this is where we got problems with some of the other assessments. They were saying, eh, marami naman bumoto dito, mga PhD yan, mga masters yan, mga engineers yan, mga ganang-ganan yan. Yes, true. But, the last time I checked, you may, have only, you may be only high school graduate. You may be not even high school graduate, or you may be just a BA, undergraduate, graduate. <laughs> um, but if you had the proper training in school, if you had the right teachers who taught you to think on your own, you'll make the right judgment. Way better than these people with all the titles, all, whether gawayan ng recto or totoyan, whether recto or real, kung hindi, natur- eh, hindi ka tinuruan ng critical thinking, malabo na you'll re- make also right decisions and choices. So for instance, there are many people who may have PhDs, less, I don't know, in natural sciences, in physics, whatever, or engineering, whatever, but they were never taught to think about what is modern pol- public policy. How is public policy conceptualized? What kinds of public policies work? Eh, baka ito nakinig lang dyan sa mga podcast. Eh, matalino eh. Pero, kulang ng training. So, nakinig lang ito sa podcast, nadadala lang dun sa mga sinasabi na madaladal ng vloggers. Kaya, nakinig kay Joe Rogan, biglang, sabi ni Joe Rogan, sabi ni Joe Rogan, huwag natin tanggalin ang kahirapan. Dahil, pag, an- pag mawala ang kahirapan, greatness will be gone. Because a lot of great people were poor before they became great. and then uh, But you forgot the 99.9% who were poor and they didn't become great and they just suffered in the meantime because they were suffering from structural disadvantage, right? Or, or uh, you forgot that in Denmark, uh, in Germany, in many very equal egalitarian societies at least compared to US they're actually even more innovative than America on a per capita basis right so, uh, so look at for instance the global innovation index right the US is not the best there many countries who do better than US are actually also less unequal countries but you wouldn't know that if you don't have proper training if you're just nakikiuso lang ay sabi ni Joe Rogan ganun ba you get what i'm saying right kaya nga tama yan marami diyan mataas yung mga degrees Pero nadadala sa mga, ano, sa mga bloggers lang, kaysa magbasa, kaysa mag-aaral, kaysa get, they get exposed to the dilemmas of policy making and how to arrive at proper decisions when it comes to political leadership, etc. So, medyo may pagkakulang talaga tayo dyan. And lastly, so ito, so in short, ha, real education is not about degrees or collecting, accumulating degrees, whether recto yan or totoo. It is about critical thinking skills. And you can get the skills even if high school graduate ka lang or college ka lang. And if you don't go to the right people or if you don't have the right teachers, kahit PhD ka postdoctoral, sabog ka pa rin mag about politics and policy making. That's also very doable. Although, of course, I didn't talk about the category of people who are actually, they know it, but opportunista sila eh. So they'll still side with bad people because may pera para sa kanila. Because may position sila. Now, ibang usapan na yan. Alright? Ibang usapan na yan. Medyo, hindi critical thinking ang kulang dyan. Ang kulang dyan ay moral conviction. Alright? Moral compass. Ibang usapan yan. So I'm not talking about people with... I'm talking about, let's say, all of us have moral compass, but we need also critical thinking. 
And then there are people who ask, uh, have no moral compass whatsoever. Kung an, kahit ano ituro mo dyan, wala, hindi nila magamit sa tama. Now, ibang usapan yan. Kaya nga sabi ko, we need leaders who have good heart and a good mind. Eh, good, ma, good heart and a sharp mind. Dapat kasama yan. Hindi pwede yung isa lang. Kasi good heart nga, wala ka namang critical thinking, bara-bara ka mag-isip, sabog ka. Kung good mind naman, pero walang heart, baka gamitin pa sa masama. Ang masama, hindi rin maganda yan. So, dapat pareho. Meron naman yan eh. Masyadong mawawa yung standards kasi natin. We don't look. Parang ano yun, nag-aanap pa ng jowa. Kasi heartbroken ka. Basta, yung, basta kung sino nandyan, basta may future, pwede na. Relax lang. Kaya nga parati advice ko sa mga friends or yung mga tao na dumaan sa heart breakup. Even sa mga ex ko na iba, kung nandiyan dumaan sa... Wag, ano na? Wag ka mag-boyfriend ka agad. Just, you know... Chill ka lang. Just, you know, make yourself grow and all. Yan. Okay, wag na. Okay, change topic na tayo. But you get what I'm saying, alright? Okay. The last thing I want to talk about is this, guys. And later on, uh, later mga 11, please tune in if you want to join us. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be joined by my very good friend. We used to be debating against each other in, in college. He was from Ateneo. I was from UP Diliman. So we had a lot of back and forth back in the day. We were colleagues back in Ateneo. Now he's in UC Berkeley. My good friend Lele Claudio, Dr. Claudio, will join us later on. So pag-usapan natin ito yung history as chismis. No? And also what does the Marcos Jr. presidency mean in the greater scheme of things. So he's going to bring in a more historian point of view. As I said, I'm more political science and economics. He's more history. So medyo may my difference is coming. And then, of course, we will be joined by my very, very good friend, vlogger extraordinaire, one person who's, I would say, 40% responsible for this meta. Like, if he didn't inspire me and push me, I wouldn't have had this meta. So I'm very thankful to him, of course, to my good friend, Mark Gamboa. All right? So please, guys, tune in later on to Lito Lina and Discussion. And thank you so much, guys. I really, really appreciate our discussion today. I know medyo, medyo nabubulol ako nung nag-start ako. Hindi ko alam bakit para masikip yata. Hindi naman, di ba? Hindi naman masikip, di ba? Okay naman yung ano natin, di ba? Eh, no. Si Lodi yan. Yo! 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 Sting like a bee. Move like a butterfly. Yeah! Yeah, okay. Alright! Mag-thank you, thank you. Parang init ang aircon ko. Wait lang, ha? Hintayin nyo ako. Nainitan ako. Actually, nadislock ako sa init. Sorry. Baggy boy. Baggy boy. Baggy boy. Nainitan ako eh. Oh, ito, ito. T-shirt na lang ako. Ayan. So, ano yung sasabi natin? Ito ah. Okay, thank you, thank you muna tayo dyan. O, oh, na kayo mag ano ah. Mag-marites na naman. Kaka... Kanina ko pa sinisaya. Huwag tayo mag-marites. Nga eh. Ako yung minamarites nyo. Hindi, meron akong... Alam mo yung parang movie ng... Ano yung parang butterfly ba yan? Yung butterfly effect. Ano, hindi, hindi ba... Ano yung movie na yan? Yung Eternal Sunshine, something like that. Past is past, wala na, you never happen. Dapat ganyan kayo sa mga ex nyo. You never happen. And then move forward na kayo. And after a few years and all, okay na, parang wala lang, back to zero. Okay. Ayan, thank you. Thank you naman tayo dyan. Sorry, nasan si Zaddy? Ay. You know? Hindi, hindi yan ang kailangan ko. Wait lang. Oh, by the way, next time tayo mag-Rizal ganyan, ha? don't worry about it. We'll discuss more. Kasi Rizal had a lot to say on education and all. Kaya ako, kaysa atakin yung mga bata or mga gano'n na may nagsasabing mali, isipin nyo, why would, they, why would they even dare to say na chismis ang history? Because nga, kulang yung critical thinking sa acting basic education. Kaya kung ano-anong kamaritas yung sinasabi ng iba. Now, ibang usapan nyo yung mga walang moral compass. Iba na yan. Ayan. Thank you kay Robin. Thank you kay Ma Victoria Baltazar. Thank you kay Mila Gachalian. Thank you kay Rose Uy. Thank you kay Ellie Ocampo. Thank you kay Jocelyn Lomberio. Ayan, si Jocelyn. Ayan. Very, ano yan. VIP supporter natin yan. Meron pala guys, VVIP. Doon sa inauguration ni Marcus, meron pala isa pang category. Very, very important people. Ibang klase. Ako gusto ko, triple VIP. Yan. Si Eileen Orbeta. Shout out naman dyan. Sabi ni Lea Zarkil. Sabi naman ni Eric Estrada. Uy, UST grad school. Kamusta naman kayo dyan, mga UST? Alam mo ba, may sasabihin ako pero wag na lang eh. Pero it's a good thing actually. Doon sa four school, yung so-called big four. Ayaw ako. Hindi, next time na. Huwag na tayo magsalita. 
Anyways, lahat ng school magaling. Asabi ko nga, hindi lang ako naniwala sa Big Four. Even though I've taught in three out of those four big schools, or I've, I've um, yeah, somehow, or like, attached to three out of those four big schools, and soon to be, you know. Okay. Um, I don't believe. But anyways, basta mabait ang mga USC na gusto kong sabihin. Napakabait nila. Yun lang. Lahat ng mga namit kong USD in my life, with rarely, with one probable exception, lahat sila mabait. Whether high school USD or college USD or lahat. Si Mocha, mabait din naman, di ba? Yeah. Ano <laughs> rin yan? Okay. Si Keith Kendrick. Si Mars Mars. You know? Live watching from Espanya, mi amigo. Hasta pronto, alright? God willing. Alright. Ma, mi familia in Espanya. Como estas? See you guys soon, ha? Eh, si, si. MB Times, thank you very much. Cooper Gonzalez. Tess Santa Maria. You know? Sabi ni Cheryl Singh. Ayan na, ayan na. Braff Pit, yun. Si Braff Pit, very ano natin, supporter natin dyan. Si Isa, good evening daw. Robin, mga kafuego. Elena, Andrea, kamusta man dyan? Ayan. Traffic daw is a big problem sa face-to-face classes. Ay, oo oh, nga, no. Pagbalik sa... Kaya nga, kailangan natin talaga yung school bus system na safe sana eh. Sa mga kabataan. Kasi dito, malapit sa amin, oh. Binukin ko na sa ko. Yung Lasal, ano, Green Hills na mga, ano. Grabe yung traffic dun sa, ano. Grabe. Kasi yung mga, siyempre, mga, mga, mga di ba, sundo sila, each of them. Minsan, ilan line yun. O, oh, ayaw ko na magsalita. Sinabi ko na yung kailangan ko sabihin. Angeline Simmons. Yan. Si Braff Pitt. Sabi niya, si Ella Cruz left the group. Guys naman, kaya nga hindi ako nagpapangalan eh. Huwag na, huwag na natin pangalan. Huwag tayong magbully. Huwag tayong ganun. Nagkamali yung bata. And of course, we have to, we have to ano, guide them into the right direction. Para sana naman, iwas-iwas din yung mga walang kwentang sinasabi. Diba? John National. Katrina Freyas. Ayan, si Katrina talaga mahilig magbigay ng pangkape. Sabi ni Margaret Rodriguez, 3-in-1 for the Zaddy. Contra Chismis. Ano yan? Parang kontra droga? <laughs> Meron daw City. Ang, pag pumasok ka daw sa City yan, nakalagay, Yes to sports, no to drugs. May mga ganun. Welcome to. Mga ganun. Hindi ko anong gimaras eh, or something like that. May nagano yung mga mga taga-UP talaga kung ano ng kwento nila. Lane Enor, thank you very much. Vilma Ross Alberto, yan, supporter natin dyan. Hi din sa inyo. Mary Gandeza, thank you very much for your support. Thank you kay Jen Aquino. Sabi niya, critical thinking is a tool of logic. Sana lang kasama to sa subject na ituturo sa... And guys, yung logic, hindi lang yung syllogism. I mean, of course, syllogism is a kind of a mathematical way of looking at things. Pero yung logic in a sense na parang... Ayoko na magsalita. Mahirap na. Kayo na mag-connect of, ng dots. Basta alam nyo na. Ayan tayo eh. Ayan tayo. Ronnie, Rona D. Thank you for your support. Ayan. Joshua Rivera Dada. Napansin ko, hindi ko pa rin napag-usapan yung DepEd. No? So maybe let's leave it to another. Let's wait for some big statements from DepEd Secretary Sarah before I can make a proper meta on that. Napansin nga, thank you guys sa yung mga nag-advise na wag, mo i, wag, wag ko daw isama-sama multiple topics, medyo magulo. So, we'll try to be disciplined, stick to one topic, and then medyo magfuego jokes tayo afterwards. Alright? Thank you kay Vilma Alberto. Uh, thank you kay Lane Enor. Thank you kay Joel Amonello. You know? Thank you kay Diane Liasos. Fenice Miguel. Yan, si Ma'am Miguel. Mabait yan. Si Jose Seguilia. You know? Hi, Prof. Daw. Sabi ni Fayed Aisha. Wassalamualaikum. Team replay naman daw si Mike Rojas. Charlie Gonzalez. Kamusta naman kay John? Kay Jer Pronimo. Ayan yung palang sasabi ko sa dulo. Kailangan mag-vlogger talaga yung mga historians din. Ayan. Para naman, di ba? Kaysa tayo magreklamo. Kasi ganyan to guys. Eto, how many people will have the privilege of going to the best schools and getting schooled on you know, Nietzsche, Foucault, and all of that? Wala. Hindi naman lahat eh. So, bakit naman? Why, why should we confine this only to those who enroll in our classes? We should get the message out. Spread the love, di ba? Spread the love. Spread the love but not the fake news. Danny and Sisa. Wag chismis daw. Isabi niya. No. Shem Zashen. Thank you very much. Anna Cabalias. You know. Dewey Elma. Sabi niya, please guess Ambeth Ocampo for those Marvel PH heroes. So, sounds exciting. O nga, no. Si, si Ambeth. Busy si Ambeth eh. Masyadong big time. Di ko kaya. Di ko siya abot. <laughs> Sige, mag-beat pa kami sana with, 
with the other historian friends. Si Shao Chua rin, we were calling for him to come back. Busy siya eh. May time siya kay Christian Esguera eh. So, mamay na lang after. Si Robin, kamusta naman dyan? Transition from English to Tagalog teaching. I don't, you know what? Dapat sana trilingual tayo eh. Espanyol, English, at a Filipino that actually has not only Tagalog 90%, but is actually a mixture of different languages. Pero wala, hindi nagawa. Tinanggal yung Spanyol. Yung Filipino natin, 90%, Tagalog lang naman. So, yung mga Bisaya, Ilocano, hindi nakaka-relate masyado. Ayan tayo. Tapos ngayon, gagawin pang Tagalog lang. Ang hirap naman nun. Ang hirap naman nun. Para lang matuwa si Robin. <laughs> Peanut Work Cruise. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you kay Shem Zeshen. You know. Agri daw, sabi ni Erna. You know. Ayan. Ayan na naman. Si Mitch, thank you. Mabait niya. Ang daming method today. Appreciate it. Salamat, chat. Team late. Hindi naman super late. Mga ano lang, 40% late. Alright. Jocelyn, thank you very much for joining us. Ayan. Napanood daw yung interview namin ni Ma'am Carlos. Don't worry. A longer version, an hour-long version will release it also soon. Don't worry about it. Asan ng kape? Ito, walang laman eh. Walang laman eh. Wala akong tubig kanina, nag-order pa ako eh. Ayan tayo. Ayan, no? You no? Ayan, talagang mabait yun si Ma'am Jocelyn. From, joining us from Florida. Thank you kay Gina Milarion. You no? Thank you kay Mira Sevidal. Mia Fresnido. Kay Ezra Gisela. Kay Amy Venson. Thank you. Kay, sige, Amy Venson. Good mood yan ngayon. Sabi naman ni Maria Esmeralda. Thank you very much. Why and how a strong education system will truly help us achieve. Yung ayusin talaga dapat natin education system, pinap- pinabayaan eh. Tingnan ko kung nasa basic education natin, how much do you really learn about martial law and those spirit? How much do you really learn about good leadership uh, from perspective of political economy? Do you even learn about what why certain countries succeed and not the Philippines? Yung hindi yung mga no, no, nonsense explanations, yung totoong explanations. Like, do we learn about agricultural policy, trade, industrial policy? Wala. Wala eh. Kulang eh. Ramil, thank you very much for your support. Ang marites nyo, dami ng comments. <laughs> Reklamo talaga. Ang dami, nahilo ako. Noe Agustin, yan. Si Nilev Argoso, thank you very much. Support, Rat Rick. You know. You know. Si Gerard Ramon. Yan. Basta daw sila sa Wikipedia. Uy, wag nyo ganun sa si Wikipedia. May link naman sa babayang kahit pa paano. Diba? Ayan tayo. Grapes Montiser, thank you very much. Rose Uy, you know. Nasaan na yung troll ko kanina? Grabe naman to si Edwin. Polyamory ka agad ang topic. Ayan. Simple gift naman daw to my niece Ariana. Uy, thank you very much kay Ma'am Lorena. Screenshot ko yan. Ha? Meron... Bibigay ko to kay Ariana. Meron ka na pang ano. Huwag naman kayo masyadong mabait. Mabait na kayo masyado kay Picasso and ano. Kay, sa, iba. sa akin kayo mabait dapat. Okay? Sa akin lang. <laughs> Grabe! Grabe! Territorial. Walang... Ayan tayo. Lenny Clemente. Yung iba nga, nagsiseparation anxiety na eh. Pag wala tayong meta. Alawang Frederick. Friedrich. Ayan. Ayan yung alaman ko. Friedrich. Ayan. Senen Makalalad. Thank you very much for your ha-ha-ha. Ayan. Thank you kay Rizal Reyes. Ayan. Ito, ito, ito. Si Wax R. Flores. Obvious na troll. Kawawa naman yung picture ng aso na nilagay mo. Napaka-cute naman. Which I'm sure hindi ikaw ganyan ka-cute. Okay. Or walang cute na ganyan aso na pupunta sa Ayan. Sorry, Lord. Respect my opinion, guys. Basta yun, na-pomo tayo ngayon. Postmodern. Respect my opinion. Uwi ka na lang daw, sabi niya. Oh, tro- alam mo ang advice ko, troll the trolls. Parang mali sila dito. Huwag tayong mabait sa kanila. They don't deserve. Pag ginanong kayo, deserve. Deserve! Basta ito guys, ha, I respect your opinion if it's based on facts. And you're not entitled to your own facts. You're only entitled to your own opinion based on facts. So, yun. Gandang gabi daw, sabi niyo, Rhea Cruz. Anyari daw, ayan, nag-postmodern lecture tayo. Vince de la Cruz, thank you very much for joining us. Rose Quito. Yun eh. Talagang mga ano to, mga... Thank you kay Senan, Makalalad. Talagang mga ano eh. Thank you kay Ivy Garcia. Thank you kay Maya na. Thank you kay Robin. Ano daw? 
Yes. Di ba guys, sabi ko ganyan tayo, di ba? Yan, okay. Palaban tayo. Mel Mendoza. Yan. Tama ni Cherosal. Legit tao mga historians dapat ang kausap natin. Alright, thank you rin kay... Hey Darian, thank you Hey Darian for your good meta today. I really like it. Kausap ko lang sarili ko, wag kayong makialam ah. Ha! <laughs> Ayan tayo. Kami lang mag-usap ah. Mamaya na kayo, wag kayong magulo. Basta Hey Darian, magaling. Bro, kayang-kaya mo yan bro. Ganun. <laughs> Ayan na naman ah. Oh, wag na tayo magpangalan ah. Magpakabayit tayo. Mabayit tayo dito. Basta bro, kaya mo. I mean, di ba, when may meeting ka, nasarap ka ng mirror. You can do it man. You're the best. You're the man. You're the best. That's good. You're the man. You're the best. Tapos <laughs> sige, pag ganun mo, nakatingin sa'yo yung mga tao. Like, <laughs> 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 Ayos mo yung quote mo. You're the man. You're the best. Tapos, you're the man. Yung mga in opening line. You're the man. Tapos <laughs> andun lahat yung boss mo nandun. Yung mga nandun. Nakin na. Okay ha. Ah, okay ha. Ah. Reading ready ha. Ah. <laughs> wala na, wala na. Sira na yung momentum mo. Pero kung medyo meta ka, oh naman! You know! <laughs> you know! <laughs> And, uh, you know! Galing ha! You know! Ready, ready ha! <laughs> Zandi Opeña, thank you very much. Ruby Palugo, thank you very much. You know! Sabi talaga eh. Ready, ready sa mirror. Richard, you can do this. Richard, we work so hard to be here. Kaya kaya mo yan. You're the man. You're the best. Kayang-kaya mo yan. Ganun. Tapos nakatingin lang pala sa lahat ng tao. Doon open yung door ng CR. Nakatingin lahat sa... Okay yan ha! Okay yan ha! Yun ha! <laughs> Ayan. Ayan tayo eh. Talagang basagan ng trip. Basagan ng, ng trip. Ayan. Alright. God bless guys. Ingat kayo dyan. Marami pa tayong pwede pag-usapan. Nakikita nyo. I-, I see what your comment. You're asking me to discuss other things. Pero huwag natin overwhelm. Alright? Is- isa-isa lang tayo. One at a time, okay? Huwag tayo mag-press con dito. Oh, huwag na tayo mag-press conference. Okay? Tama na. Okay na, tama na. Okay na. Dandal ko na. Oh my good na. 8.30 na. I have to check papers pa. And then, mga 11, habol ulit guys. Ha? Please join us, me and Leloy and Mark Gamboa. Alright? God bless. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat. Adios.